Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and today we're headed to Johto for the highly requested sequel to my latest challenge video. Last time out we tested how Ash's team held up in his journey through Kanto, and in this video we're going again in Pokemon Crystal. If you want to check out the previous video, it'll be linked in the description. Let's go through the basics before getting too far into it. Getting the exact levels will be more difficult this time around because it's a bit less accurate, and also, Ash takes several Kanto Pokemon with him into the Johto region, so let me explain my solution. All Kanto Pokemon have been reset. When they crossed the border and entered New Bark Town, they forgot all their training, with the exception of maybe a move or two. As far as their levels are concerned for battles, I'm going to be keeping them on par with the Pokemon they're facing. As it was last time, we won't be using any items in battle, and the battle style will be on set, because those are the anime rules. Alright, let's get into it. Ash arrives in New Bark Town with four Pokemon on hand, Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charizard, so that's where we're beginning our journey. Now, some people were upset with me for not catching Krabby in the last video, which I actually did do, but I cut it because we didn't end up using Krabby or Kingler in any battles, but this time we're doing it all. On Route 29, Ash catches his first ever second generation Pokemon in the shape of Heracross. The bug and fighting type ironically doesn't put up any fight, wanting to be caught by the Pokemon protagonist, and thankfully, its counterpart in the game follows suit. According to its Pokedex entry, Heracross can easily throw around something weighing 12,000 pounds, meaning the single horn Pokemon could really ruin an elephant's day. Two at a time, probably. Ash doesn't stop at one on Route 29, though. He's keen to give his team more of a Johto feel early on, and once again a Pokemon chooses him more than him actively pursuing the catch. Chikorita chases Ash down so she can join his party after he rescues her from Team Rocket. With a Johto Grass starter added to our lineup, it's time for our first gym battle. In fighting Flyer with Fire, Ash takes on Faulkner in the Violet City Gym. His team of choice features Chikorita, Pikachu, and Charizard. Let's start with the Grass type. By this point in the anime, she'd only used Vine Whip and Razor Leaf, so getting her up to level 8 where she learns the latter seemed about right. As I mentioned at the start, the Kanto Pokemon are just going to be on par, so we've got Pikachu also at level 8 with Thundershock, Growl, Thunderwave, and Thunder. Last up is Charizard, and he makes it 3 at level 8, with his moveset featuring Ember, Growl, Smokescreen, and Fly. This is the battle in the anime where Charizard used Fly for the first time, so it felt necessary to teach him. Okay, let's go destroy Faulkner. This one's a real mismatch. Instead of sending out Pikachu or Charizard first and ending this immediately, I thought I'd at least be fair to the Violet Gym Leader and mimic the anime by leading off with Chikorita. Faulkner's level 7 Pidgey is up first, and it's honestly a bit of a joke. Even with the type disadvantage, Chikorita deals with the Tiny Bird Pokemon pretty easily. When Pidgeotto comes in, we go out to Charizard. I sort of just wanted to use my whole team here. After getting hit by a Gust, Charizard uses Fly, and I found out the hard way that Gust hits for double damage if you're up in the air. You learn something new every day. I knew Twister did that, but I've never seen it with Gust before, although it makes sense. Anyway, we end up switching out to Pikachu, who, after getting hit by Gust and Tackle, connects with Thunder to earn us our first badge. That was rather easy, but we won't be seeing Charizard for a while, because after being a bit of a dick, Ashley's in with Liza at the Charizific Valley. Stay if you want to. I can get along just fine without you. Ash, no! Who wants a weak Charizard anyway? So stay here. After heading south and reaching Route 33, Ash decides he needs a new fire type, and Cyndaquil seems to be the perfect fit. Once again, Team Rocket were involved in the catch, with Ash throwing a Pokeball to save Cyndaquil from an explosion. Now, this was another part of the game where I had to intervene and change the narrative of the anime a bit. In Cyndaquil's debut episode, the Firestarter uses Flamethrower, which it doesn't learn until level 46. Instead of catching a Cyndaquil who's higher level than some of the champion's Pokemon, I decided to catch one at an appropriate level for the area and just have him learn Fire Blast. Now, I know Fire Blast isn't Flamethrower, but you can't get a TM for Flamethrower, and it's a trade-off of accuracy for power that I think makes the two moves more or less the same. I know some people won't be happy with this, but believe me, this will be more interesting than going through the game with, like, a level 80 Pikachu and a level 50 Cyndaquil. I had to use my best judgement with this challenge, and I think this makes the most sense. With that out of the way, let's keep it going and visit the Azalea Gym. For his battle with Bugsy, Ash decided to use Chikorita, Pikachu, and Cyndaquil. For this run, if the moves didn't give me any major clues, then I tried to stay under-level to keep things interesting. 
As a result, we've got Cyndaquil at level 11 with Tackle, Leer, Smokescreen, and Fire Blast. Chikorita's level 12 with Tackle, Growl, Razor Leaf, and Reflect. At this point, Ash's Chikorita had only used Tackle, Vine Whip, and Razor Leaf, so we don't have much info. Finally, we've got Pikachu at level 15 with Quick Attack, Double Team, Thunder Wave, and Thunder. For the early gyms, I was just getting Pikachu up to the average level of the gym leader's team, so that's why she's at 15. Also, I know Pikachu and Chikorita's genders are reversed from the anime. It doesn't make any difference to the run though, so let's move on and get into the battle. Bugsy leads off with Metapod and we start with Cyndaquil. One Fire Blast turns Metapod into Fertilizer and I really feel like people are going to hate that I gave him that move. When Scyther comes in, we switch out to Pikachu and after paralyzing the Bug Flying type, we get off a Thunder that almost knocks him out. He just about survives though and KOs Pikachu with a Fury Cutter. We send Chikorita in and the paralyzed Scyther can't get out of the way of Tackle in time and falls to the Grass type. Kakuna comes out last, and we give Tackle a go again, but it doesn't do too much, and once Harden comes into play, another switch up is needed. Cyndaquil comes back out, and yet again, Fire Blast obliterates the opposition. Bugsy hands over the Hive Badge, and it's time to leave Azalea Town. At this point, we have to say goodbye to Heracross, who's sent to Professor Oak's lab, and Squirtle, who rejoins the Squirtle Squad. With two spaces opened up in the party, you know what that means. On Route 34, Ash finds a Totodile, and as he's now lacking a water type, decides that it'll be a perfect replacement for Squirtle. In the anime, Misty's also keen on the starter, and they both throw lure balls at the same time, one of which catches it. They battle to decide who gets it, but we don't have to go through all that. Although, I couldn't manage to catch it in a lure ball, so this entire challenge is basically a complete failure. It's about to get even worse, though. In Ilex Forest, Ash meets a shiny Noctowl, and after battling it with Pikachu, he adds the flying type to his team. I really put time into this. I tried. Believe me, I tried. I think I've used up all my shiny luck for this channel though. I couldn't find a shiny variant of Noctowl, so unfortunately we're gonna have to continue the run with this bog standard owl. Whitney's our next opponent, and it turns out Ash had just as many problems with her as every kid who started their journey in 2nd gen. Miltank's rollout destroys Ash so badly that in the rematch, Whitney lets Ash use 3 Pokemon against just her ace. The trio he ends up choosing is made up of Cyndaquil, Pikachu, and Totodile. Luckily, we have a few more clues about level this time around. Cyndaquil hadn't used Quick Attack by this point in the anime, so seeing as he learns that at level 19, it seems safe to have him at 18. Pikachu's at 19 because, again, that's the average level of Whitney's team. Lastly, we've got Totodile at level 20 with the moves Scratch, Leer, Bite, and Water Gun. Aside from Leer, those are the exact moves that Totodile had used by this episode, and seeing as he learns Bite at 20, this level seems about right. Okay, time for the Goldenrod Gym Battle. Just to be faithful to the anime, we made sure to get absolutely annihilated by Miltank on our first run through. She didn't even really need Rollout. She just stomped Cyndaquil, Pikachu, and Totodile into unconsciousness, which is pretty understandable. A cow fully stepping on a mouse with all of its weight probably should be enough to knock it out. At least. Anyway, let's try this again. As always, Whitney leads off with her Clefairy, and we start out with Cyndaquil. In all my years of playing this game, I don't think I've ever struggled against Clefairy, and this was no different. The fairy Pokemon goes down without dealing any damage, and then it's just the small matter of knocking out Miltank. Immediately, two collisions from Rollout knock out Cyndaquil after he misses a Fire Blast. We send in Pikachu next, and she just about survives the third hit of Rollout before paralyzing Miltank with Thunder Wave. After Pikachu connects with Thunder, Miltank's streak is broken when she misses a Rollout. Then, the Pokemon mascot scores a critical hit with Thunder, knocking out Miltank and earning us the win. With the third badge added to our case, we can get past Sudowoodo and head to Ecrity. When we arrive in Ecritique City, we need to take on Kimono Girl Mickey. She's known as Satsuki in the anime, but it's the same character and Ash does take her on in a one-on-one -on -one battle in the episode Troubles Brewing. The matchup sees Pikachu facing off against Jolteon, and as always, it's interrupted by Team Rocket. They don't feature in our battle, but we do at least get the same outcome as the anime by knocking out Jolteon. Okay, on to the gym. The team Ash uses for his 3 on 3 battle against Morty is made up of Noctowl, Pikachu, and Cyndaquil. This is going to be another one where we have to ignore the moves used in the anime. I'll get to that in a second though. Let's start with Cyndaquil. In this battle, Ash's Cyndaquil used Quick Attack and Swift for the first time, so we've added both moves to his moveset. 
Cyndaquil naturally learns Swift at level 36, but it's a TM you acquire early on, so we can just make the leap in logic that Ash used that instead. Seeing as he learned Quick Attack at level 19, and this is the first time we get to see it, I think there's every chance he was still around the early 20s. Moving on, we've got Pikachu at level 22, with the same moves as ever, a little below the gym leader's average, but it's close enough. By this point in the anime, Tackle, Hypnosis, Foresight, and Peck were all regular moves for Ash's Noctowl, but once again we're going to have to overrule the anime to keep this interesting. In the episode where Ash battles Morty, Noctowl used Confusion for the first time, but in the game Noctowl doesn't learn it until level 41. That's probably overkill to face off against a gym leader whose ace is at level 25. Instead, we've just got him up to level 22 like the others. Hopefully that works for everyone. Okay, let's give this a try. Morty leads off with Ghastly, and we send in Cyndaquil first. After a missed Fire Blast, Ghastly uses Curse, cutting away half of his own HP, but putting a curse on the Fire Mouse Pokemon. We switch out to Noctowl to get rid of it, and then take out Ghastly with a couple of Peck Attacks. We call Cyndaquil back in when Morty sends out Haunter, and once again his hatred of mice shines through as he goes for Curse. That ends up backfiring when Fire Blast knocks out Haunter before the curse can even take hold. When Gengar is sent out, we recall Cyndaquil and put Noctowl back in predicting Shadow Ball. Unfortunately, Morty outplays us and goes for Hypnosis, which puts Noctowl to sleep. As we know Dream Eater is coming next, we switch out to Pikachu to avoid the attack. Gengar follows up by missing a second Hypnosis, and we land a Thunder Wave. The ensuing Thunder attack cuts away almost half of Gengar's HP, but Hypnosis puts Pikachu to sleep. Once again, we can swap out for free, knowing Dream Eater's up next. When Cyndaquil comes in, Gengar is stuck in place thanks to Paralysis. Fire Blast knocks the ghost into red health, but Hypnosis lands again, and now our whole team is asleep. Not exactly ideal against a Pokemon with Dream Eater. The first attack one-shots Cyndaquil and gets Gengar back into green HP. We bring in Pikachu, and once again, Dream Eater is a one-hit KO. This really isn't good. Noctowl is really up against it, but this is sort of how things went in the anime, so kind of accurate so far. Another Dream Eater lands, and although it doesn't knock out Noctowl, Gengar is now at full health. The next turn is a wash because Gengar is fully paralyzed, but on the following turn, Noctowl stays asleep and gets hit by Dream Eater again. Finally, Noctowl awakens and lands a peck, but we're still a long way from safety. In what is one of the most miraculous sequence of events that I've ever experienced in a Pokemon game, Noctowl was able to connect with Peck over and over again while Gengar jumped back and forth between missing Hypnosis and being fully paralyzed. Eventually, after many, many turns in an absolutely massive upset, Noctowl takes down Gengar and makes it a one-on-one. -on -one. When Morty's final Haunter comes in, Noctowl puts him to sleep and proceeds to hit another four packs on the Sleeping Ghost, knocking him out and earning us the win. Completely heroic. Who needs a shiny? With half of our badge case filled, we can leave at Critique City and make our way to Olivine. Before reaching the port city though, we have something important to take care of. By taking down a wild mill tank, Chikorita reaches level 21 and evolves into Bayleaf. That's the only notable happening for Ash before he meets Jasmine in Olivine, but unfortunately, she's not ready for a gym battle. She's caring for the sick Ampharos in the lighthouse and sends Ash to Cianwood to pick up medicine. Once we cross the sea and collect the secret potion, we send it back to Jasmine. Before heading back to Olivine though, Ash finds out about the Cianwood City Gym and challenges Chuck to a battle. For the fighting type gym, Ash chooses to use Bayleaf and Pikachu in what may be one of his best selections ever. Here's where we're at heading into the gym battle. Bayleaf's at level 31 with Body Slam, Synthesis, Razor Leaf, and Strength. A few episodes prior to taking on Chuck in the Cianwood Gym, Bayleaf used Body Slam for the first time, and seeing as that move is learned at level 31, this was an easy one to place. Strength is necessary to reach Chuck, which is why that's in his moveset too. Once again, Pikachu sitting at the average level of the gym leader's team, with the only major difference from last time being Thunderbolt instead of Thunder. Right, let's do this. Bayleaf and Primate begin the gym battle, and all the fighting type manages to do is get off a single Leer. Bayleaf tears through him with Body Slam and finishes him off with a Razor Leaf. Poliwrath comes in and another Razor Leaf cuts away almost half of his HP before he misses a Hypnosis. Razorleaf then knocks him into red health, and when he can't connect with Dynamic Punch, the battle is as good as done. I wanted to use both team members though, so I switched into Pikachu. She immediately gets put to sleep, and when we bring Bayleaf back in, Dynamic Punch connects to cut away half of his health and confuse him. I probably should have just knocked out Poliwrath when I had the chance. 
Luckily, Bayleaf breaks through confusion and hits a final Razor Leaf to knock out the Water Fighting type and give us the win. That was probably dumber than anything Ash has ever done. Anyway, we got over the line in the end, and now that Ampharos is fit and healthy in the Lighthouse, we can take on Jasmine in the Olivine Gym. Ash chooses Pikachu and Cyndaquil for his face off with Jasmine, which is once again a pretty decent choice. Ash is really growing now. Unfortunately, I think I'm regressing. Anyway, once again, I've leveled Pikachu up to the average and her moveset's unchanged, but with Cyndaquil, we're not in a great place. The fire type hadn't learned Flame Wheel yet, so I just tried to stay under level 27. That made this battle incredibly difficult. Like I said, I think I'm regressing. Anyway, let's get into it. In a slow and confusing battle, Pikachu struggles her way past Jasmine's two Magnemites using only electric type moves. When all is said and done though, the electric mass is paralyzed and low on health. When Steelix comes out, the only real choice we have is to go for quick attack and accept our fate. The speedy hit does manage to overcome Pikachu's paralysis, but one thunk sound effect later, Steelix's HP has barely changed. The spiked steel snake cracks Pikachu with an iron tail, knocking her out and making it a one-on-one. -on -one. When Cyndaquil comes in, he lands a fire blast that turns out to be a one-shot critical hit. There's virtually no chance that he would have lived through an attack from Steelix, so that was definitely needed. This one actually took a ridiculous number of tries, but this is a challenge after all, so I wanted to see if I could get through it like this. Okay, now it's time to lose another team member. Ash sends Bulbasaur to Professor Oak's lab to ease tension between the grass and water type Pokemon there, and once he's done, they decide together that he should stay. Honestly, most of you probably forgot that I even had him with me. But you know what that means. When one door closes, another door opens. Not really, that doesn't actually make any sense, but it's fitting here. After winning the extreme Pokemon race, Ash gets an egg from the daycare, and when on Route 42, that egg hatches. I probably didn't need to go to the effort of actually hatching it where it did in the anime, but I did anyway. Putting way too much effort into entirely the wrong things is kind of a signature of my videos. Anyway, Fampi comes out of the egg, and that'll be the last Johto Pokemon that we'll be adding to our team. In Mahogany Town, Ash goes after his 7th gym badge, once again using the team of Cyndaquil and Pikachu. There's almost no real change to our team from the last gym battle, so let's jump right into this one. There's actually not that much to get into. Once again, Ash has picked a good team, so we've got a pretty easy job. Pikachu easily picks off Seal with a Thunderbolt. I just realized I spelled Seal wrong, <laughs> but also capitalized it like he's taking out the Singer. He didn't take out the Singer, just, just the Pokemon. Cyndaquil knocks out Piloswine with a couple of Fire Blasts, and then we go back out to Pikachu to finish off Dugong with two more Thunderbolts. It's a simple battle that earns us the Glacier Badge, and leaves us just one free spot in our badge case. Once he reaches Blackthorn City, Ash takes on Claire to try for his final Gym Badge. For this tough matchup, Ash pulls out the big guns, using Snorlax, Pikachu, and Charizard for his face-off with his self-proclaimed World's Best Dragon Master. While running Snorlax back through some of his basic training, we cross paths with Raikou, but it flees before we can get a good look, which is pretty faithful to the anime too. Anyway, for our battle with the Blackthorn Gym Leader, we've got all of our team members up to level 35. That'll hopefully keep it somewhat challenging. Snorlax has Headbutt, Amnesia, Ice Punch, and Hyper Beam. The normal type learned Ice Punch before this battle to help with Claire's Dragon type team, and luckily we could get the TM for it to keep things accurate. Jarzar's got Flamethrower, Scary Face, Smokescreen, and Fly, which is, again, a pretty accurate moveset for this point, or at least as good as I could do. I was also finally able to replace Pikachu's Thunder Wave with a more anime accurate move, so now she's all set with her made for TV moveset. Okay, for the last time in Johto, let's get into this gym battle. Claire leads off with one of her three Dragonairs, and we start out with Snorlax. Even though the Dragon type manages to paralyze Snorlax and hit him with a slam, a couple of Ice Punches cut her down without too much issue. Another Dragonair comes out, and again, a 1-2 of Ice Punches take her down before she can cause any real trouble. The final of Claire's Dragonairs is sent in, and it's yet another repeat. Back-to-back -back Ice Punches deal with her easily, and Snorlax's HP is still in the green. When Kingdra comes in, the normal type finally slips up, missing a Hyper Beam after Claire's last Pokemon fails a Smokescreen. Then a Surf chips away another bit of HP before Hyper Beam crashes into Kingdra, cutting away around three quarters of her health. Claire uses a Hyper Potion to heal her right back up, and then we run that turn again. Surf and Hyper Beam leave Snorlax and Kingdra in red health, but with Hyper Beam requiring a recharge, the Water Dragon type is able to get the win with a Hyper Beam of her own. We call in Charizard and use... Scary Face? Huh? What? 
I have no idea why I did that. I think I'm slowly transforming into Ash. Regardless, we still pick up the win with Fly, and now that we have 8 badges to our name, it's time to figure out what to do with the Pokemon League. Now, Will and Karen have never made appearances in the anime, and even though Koga, Bruno and Lance all have, the only battle Ash has had with any of them was the Fuchsia City Gym battle. We played that one out in the last video, and Ash's team was designed for Koga's gym team and not his Elite Four group. So I didn't really have any guide for what to do here. I decided to just pick a team of Pikachu and Johto Pokemon, and try to go through the Elite Four using them. Now that we have access to the move deleter, we can make sure our team are only using anime accurate moves, and as far as levels go, the Johto Pokemon are all pretty accurate to where they were for the second gen Pokemon League. Pikachu has just been set to the league average to keep up with the rest of the challenge. Again, there's no real guide for what to do here, so I hope this works as a solution. The battle with Will goes off without a hitch. Pikachu takes out his first Zatu with Thunderbolt, Cyndaquil knocks out Jinx with a Flamethrower, Bayleaf beats Slowbro with Razorleaf, and Heracross one-shots Exeggutor with a Megahorn. We were 80% done with the battle and hadn't taken a single point of damage. Then, his last Pokemon, Zatu number 2, just started destroying us. Combining Confuse Ray and Psychic, the Mystic Pokemon wiped out Pikachu and Totodile and almost got the better of Noctowl too. Luckily, Hypnosis lands and we can switch out to Cyndaquil to finish the battle with a Flamethrower. That was not very hard, even if I made it look like it was. That's a special talent of mine. Koga's up next, and Cyndaquil proves to be our star player yet again. The Fire Mouse burns up Ariados and Faratress to start the battle, and then, as soon as we switch out, things start to go wrong. Muck gets the better of Pikachu and Noctowl before Cyndaquil comes back in and picks up his third KO of the battle. Crobat comes in, and again, we recall Cyndaquil and things start to go wrong. The Bat cuts down Totodile and Heracross before Bayleaf is sent out to deal with Koga's penultimate Pokémon. When Venomoth is sent out, we go back to Cyndaquil to finish off the battle because he's the only Pokemon we can really trust. Obviously, he gets us over the line in what was another battle that was probably closer than it should have been. The matchup against Bruno starts off easily, which seems to be a signature of the Elite Four. Noctowl knocks out Hitmontop without taking too much damage, Bayleaf one-shots Onyx with an unnecessary critical hit on Razorleaf, after a few switches, Totodile finishes off Hitmonchan, and Noctowl comes back out to get his second knockout of the battle against Hitmonlee. Then Bruno's Machamp is sent out, and even though he's put to sleep and almost knocked out with confusion, a max potion ruins all of Noctowl's hard work. The disappointingly shineless owl gets the grappler back into red health, but he wakes up in time to hit Rock Slide and score a knockout. Cyndaquil comes in and a quick attack leaves Machamp with only a sliver of health remaining, but once again, Rock Slide picks up another win. Pikachu's quick attack finally eliminates the fighting type and gives us the win over Bruno, leaving only one Elite Four member. Karen's first two Pokemon make just as much impact as Will's, Koga's, and Bruno's. Heracross absolutely annihilates Umbreon and Vileplume with a couple of Megahorns. Gengar does a little better, managing to get off a Destiny Bond to knock out Totodile when she goes down. Murkrow doesn't do anything of note, going down to Cyndaquil's Flamethrower and leaving Karen with only one. With no super effective moves to hit her with though, Houndoom poses a serious threat. Karen's ace knocks out Pikachu, Noctowl, Bayleaf, and Cyndaquil, taking the battle down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Luckily, Heracross comes in and knocks out the Demon Dog with Takedown. I feel like my general incompetence has made these battles very accurate to the anime, with most of them coming right down to the wire. Anyway, with the Elite Four defeated, only Lance remains, so let's take on the real challenge of the Pokémon League. Gyarados is up first for the Dragon Master, and this is the only part of the battle that's going to be easy. With his quad weakness to Electric-type moves, a single Thunderbolt one-shots him and gives us the advantage. When Dragonite comes in, we get off two more Thunderbolts, while the Vision-impaired Dragon can't connect with Hyper Beam. Not wanting to ride our luck too far, we recall Pikachu and send in Bayleaf. He gets hit by Hyper Beam on Switch-in, but manages to live through it and knock out Dragonite with two Body Slams while he's recharging. Lance's second Dragonite comes in and Bayleaf manages to paralyze him with Body Slam before going down to a Blizzard. We choose Heracross next and he manages to get the better of the paralyzed Dragon type with a couple of takedowns. This is going shockingly well. Aerodactyl's up next for Lance and we get a bit lucky when we switch into Noctowl. The prehistoric Pokemon misses a Rock Slide and we connect with Hypnosis to put him to sleep. We switch out to Pikachu knowing she can do some real damage and end up knocking Aerodactyl out in two hits. That leaves Lance with only two, and when his level 50 Dragonite comes in, we switch back out to Noctowl. 
A single hyperbeam obliterates the bird and forces us into Heracross. While Dragonite's recharging, the bug fighting type gets off a Megahorn and a takedown to cut him down to a tiny sliver of health. Frustratingly, Lance uses a full restore to heal him back up, but it doesn't make any real difference in the end. Before long, Heracross gets the better of him and makes it a 4 on 1. Charizard is sent in and after getting hit by a powerful takedown, he does manage to get the better of Heracross. That's all he can do though. Pikachu comes out and hits a Thunderbolt to give us the win and earn Ash a Pokemon League Conference title about 18 years too early. As anyone who's played Crystal knows, the post-game in Kanto is a huge part of what the game offers. I went through that entire journey in my last video though. I thought it would be pretty boring to see me go through all of those gym battles again, so I decided to take on the two real challenges that Kanto has to offer. In Pokemon Crystal, the Viridian City Gym has been taken over by Blue, aka Gary, and it's actually a fairly tough battle. We did do this one last time too, but it's a proper battle from the anime and people would probably be upset if I left it out. Still, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but we'll be using the same team that Ash used in the anime. He picks Tauros, Heracross, Muck, Bayleaf, Snorlax and Charizard for his long built up match with Gary, and we'll be doing the same. Once again, we've deleted every move that wasn't used in the anime, and we're a little underleveled, so it should be close. We lead off with Snorlax and he manages to take down Pidgeot and Alakazam with Ice Punch and Hyper Beam respectively. Gary's third Pokemon Rhydon lives through an Ice Punch though and takes out Snorlax with Earthquake. Bayleaf comes in and easily beats the ground and rock type with a quad effective Razor Leaf. Executor is up next and after paralyzing him with Body Slam, Bayleaf is recalled. We bring in Charizard and one flamethrower destroys the three-headed coconut monster. Gary's penultimate Pokemon is Gyarados, and Charizard, Tauros, and Heracross combine to knock him out and take the Viridian Gym Leader down to one. When Arcanine comes in though, he just tears through our team using a little help from Full Restores. Eventually, we're down to just Bayleaf, Heracross, and Muck, all of whom are around half health, with Bayleaf and Heracross both weak to fire. We choose to send in Muck, and from full health, a crit sludge bomb leaves Arcanine in red health and poisons him. Muck then lives through a flamethrower, and the poison finishes off Arcanine and Gary. Just like the Elite Four, we breezed through the majority of the battle and then got absolutely destroyed by his final Pokemon. But with Blue down, that leaves just one battle remaining. After a bit of grinding, we head into Mount Silver with the team who conquered the Elite Four to face off against Red. This is sort of an idealist Ash team that he might have reached if his Pokemon evolved versus the Johto team that he actually built. This definitely didn't happen in the anime, just in case you were wondering. Again though, I think people would probably want me to include it. Just in case anyone is wondering, because I certainly didn't remember it like this, but Ash's Cyndaquil didn't evolve into Quilava until the Diamond and Pearl series, so I just kept him as a Cyndaquil. Okay, let's give this a go. We're pretty underleveled, but I think we can do it. The battle begins with Red's Pikachu facing off against Ash's Heracross, and it doesn't last long. A couple of horn attacks knock out the electric mouse before he can deal any damage. Venusaur comes out next and we switch into Noctowl. After getting hit by a solar beam, he uses Hypnosis to put the evolved grass starter to sleep. Then we bring in our MVP Cyndaquil and a single flamethrower knocks out Venusaur. Red sends in Espeon and unfortunately our Cyndaquil can't survive through one psychic. Noctowl does though and again he uses Hypnosis to put one of Red's Pokemon to sleep. That's essentially his entire job here, and he is absolutely nailing it. We bring in Heracross and his super effective Megahorn one-shots the Psychic type. When Red calls Charizard into battle, we switch out to Noctowl once again, and after a wing attack and a fire spin, Noctowl's clean to life on 1 HP, but before the fire can knock him out, he lands Hypnosis one last time. We bring in Pikachu, and after one Thunderbolt, Charizard wakes up and hits a flamethrower that falls just short of knocking her out. That allows a second Thunderbolt, and I thought Red was down to one because I completely forgot about Snorlax. Unfortunately, the normal type was still alive and well, and he comes out next. After defeating Pikachu and getting slashed by Totodile, Snorlax uses Rest to heal himself up. We go into Heracross and he's hit by Snore, but a couple of Megahorns knock out the sleeping Pokemon, and this time, Red really is down to one. Blastoise is called out and gets the better of our weakened Heracross, but when Bayleaf comes in, he can't survive for long. Two Razor Leafs finish off Blastoise and hand us the win. Red is forced to go through a portal because he's an ancient pharaoh or something, I, I don't really remember how this happened. But I do know that will do it. I know these videos aren't for everyone and I really had to mix up the levels a bit for this to work. If you made it this far, I really hope you enjoyed. 
If I do go on to make this challenge for Hoenn, I'm going to attempt to go through using strictly moves from the anime, but I definitely need a short break before jumping into that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.